Big game breakdown continues. Big 12 showdown, Baylor and Texas. Right now, the Baylor, uh, sorry, the Texas Longhorns, minus three. I'm seeing some two and a halfs popping up out there uh, right now. 133 and a half, the current total for Baylor and Texas tonight. You want to see two teams that look pretty close in the standings? Yeah, <laughs> how about that? Couldn't look any closer than that. Funny, Oklahoma State is the exact same record as well. Three teams uh, in the same conference with the exact same record, both non-conference and conference play. But obviously, standing-wise, these two teams as tight as it gets. And look, when it comes to quality depth, I don't know there's a better conference in the Big 12 this season. I really don't. They're probably going to have six teams in the tournament. Maybe they deserve seven or eight. Uh, you know, the mediocre teams in this conference are pretty good. This is a big game for these two. The loser here is really going to be fighting an uphill battle to be playing in the big dance a month from now. Well, a little over a month from now. First meeting, Baylor minus three at home. 69 to 60, they won that game. Texas led by 12 at the break, 40 to 28, but scored only 20 points in the second half of that ball. And they didn't have Kerwin Roach in that game, but certainly you talk about offensive execution, Texas didn't have it against the Bears. You look at the shooting in the first meeting, Texas with 19 more shot attempts, they made fewer baskets than Baylor. That's why they lost the game. When you dominate the boards, when you don't turn it over, but you can't put the biscuit in the basket, that's certainly what happened to Texas in that first meeting. But Baylor has that type of defensive capability. They certainly do. They, you know, um, <laughs> they use that same defense to lock down Kansas over the weekend. I mean, you saw that game. The Kansas, 25 of 63. They only shot 6 of 31 from three-point range. And note the fact they jacked up 31 three-pointers. Nothing in the paint for the Jayhawks in that contest. Baylor, six steals. Baylor, four block shots. The defense was there. They'd come close to beating Kansas and Lawrence. They led 67-61 late in that contest. Then Kansas scored the final nine points to steal the win. This time around, Baylor went for the kill. And it really showed 80-64 final. Scott Drew, the Bears head coach, following the ball game. Quote, when you play a team like Kansas that has won as many titles as they have, as they have it's hard to beat them in close games. You have to beat them. I thought that's what we did today, is give ourselves a cushion at the end where if we had a turnover or missed a free throw or something, we would still be in position to win. Now, certainly an issue with Baylor when it comes to the spot here. Huge win over Kansas, blowout win over Kansas. <laughs> you know, Now, short turnaround time for the Bears in a game where, I mean, we know what the story is with defense. Defense takes effort. When you're tired, when your legs are tired, when you haven't been practicing the way you're supposed to be practicing, when you've been enjoying your win over Kansas, sometimes you're a step slow on D. That's my biggest concern for Baylor tonight. Texas defense has been there all year. You know, they're number eight in the country defensively. We expected that from Shaka Smart squad, especially considering the talent they have in the low post I'll talk about in just a minute. But Texas coming off a bad defensive game. A really bad defensive game. They allowed 34 of 62 from the floor at TCU. 16-point loss, 87 to 71 in that contest. Uh, 10 of 20 from three-point range they gave up in that contest. They only forced five turnovers. They allowed 23 assists. That's not the way Texas has played defense all year. Certainly, Shaka Smart was not amused. Here's his quote following the loss against the Horned Frogs. It starts with who we are. And if we go out and play and bring the same level of spirit and energy to the court that we did today, it really doesn't matter who we play in the Big 12. Everybody is good enough to beat that Texas team that played today. Certainly, smart, not amused by the effort. I would anticipate we'll see a big effort from the Texas Longhorns this evening against <laughs> a team that uh, plays defense but has their issues on the offensive end. And certainly Texas, when it comes to defense, they've got the best shot blocker in the nation. Uh, I, I think he's ranked number two now in block shots in the country. The kid from Marshall has more than he does. But Muhammad Bamba has been an absolute low post beast for the Longhorns all season long. 98 blocks in 735 floor minutes. That's a record pace for NCAA basketball. I worry about the rest of the team's defense. We saw it on Saturday. They're relying so much. Uh, on Bamba to make plays kinds of fundamentals weren't there. I would assume Smart got back to some fundamentals in practice, but not a whole lot of practice time for this one. And 
the bigger issue for Texas, not the defensive side. I know they had a bad defensive game on Saturday, but their biggest issue is on the offensive side. Bamba right now, he's their leading scorer. Well, he's tied with uh, Dylan Ostrowski. Both of these guys are not players who you're going to run offensive sets for. They get a lot of garbage buckets by the hoop. They do not a good job on the offensive glass, all of that. But Texas doesn't really have a whole lot of players that you're going to run plays for. <laughs> That's an issue. The Longhorns on the offensive end against an opponent who plays pretty darn good defense. Certainly lean under in this game. I do not expect a high-scoring affair. All right, sports bit. Betting insight today from SBR Picks. We'll be back on Tuesday. Loaded show. All the big game breakdowns, all the betting news right here at SBRPicks.com. Like the show? Help us keep the lights on. Please make sure to comment, share, and subscribe to all the Sportsbook Review videos. Thanks so much. Best of luck. Enjoy the game.